Hello, welcome to Economy of Trust Show. Today, my guest Camilla is working on something that can revolutionize many, many industries around the world, from water treatment to food security to food shelf life and many, many other aspects of it. Fascinating technology, beautiful lady. Please enjoy the show, support us, share us. See you soon. Uh, Camilla, good morning and welcome to Economy of Trust Show. Good morning. Good morning. It's really nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And again, uh, we're going to talk today a lot about Ukraine and uh, how your expertise can really help define future Ukraine. But first, we always start with the guests introducing your expertise and who you are, what do you do now? Yes, thank you, Henry. It's really nice to be uh, to be with you. And uh, like you said, my name is Kamila Khulova. I am uh, Ukrainian and uh, I was born in a beautiful city of Nikopol. And uh, in 2002, I left Ukraine to, to embrace on the studies in, uh, at that time in Spain, and now I'm located in Sweden. So my aim uh, is uh, to, to be able to utilize all the expertise, education-wise and work-wise, to be able to gather all that experience and bring it with full force to help my country in need. Therefore, it's, uh, I'm, yeah right here with you <laughs> well thank you so let's now let's talk uh, about your expertise obviously you deal with a lot of uh, you know a small world a zone right uh, and uh, but it has a lot of implications so yeah. give us a, a two minute lesson on why is it important in a general sense well if we just say ozone that is really really limited and it's a, it's a gas and we will talk about it later but if we if i say water and how to make water drinkable, how to treat the water, how to make sure that the food is not perished before time, how we can prolong the shelf life of the food and make it safe to eat for the consumer, then the scope becomes much bigger. So what uh, I'm working with and my main uh, specialty and expertise is to do just that, to make sure that the water that is used in different processes is uh, treated with respect because it's the resource that is uh, <laughs> that is uh, limited and basically we borrow it from the next generations. So it's our duty to return it in the state, at least as we got it. So our technology is based on a chemical free treatment of uh, any water that is involved in any process, be it a big processing plant for food, be it a fish farm with recirculated aquaculture or actually the water that we drink. The main point is to make the water to be applicable for reuse so we can limit the, the waste that is going on right now with the water and to make sure that it's safe. So that is how we, uh, that is the very general. Great, great. Well, let me, let me break it down here further. So basically what you do is you allow the ozone uh, through your technology to clean uh, the water in a sense, right? From and being able, from being a dirty water in any type of dirt, right? That we're talking about consumer or industrial uh, into something drinkable, correct? Yes. And Thank you, something. Build sustainable systems? Correct. Something drinkable, something reusable, and something that can be safely discharged to the nature. Because you, you actually mentioned a really good point, clean water and drinkable water. It's a, it's a little bit confusing term because when we say the water is clean, we would imagine water that is basically transparent. Yeah. However, the transparency of the water doesn't indicate that it's safe to drink. The river can be very, very transparent, but it can be contaminated with a lot of chemical pollution or other microorganisms that shouldn't be consumed, for example. Therefore, what we do is apply the um, ozone, which is a not new technology, but the way we do it is an innovative way of achieving the most effective and environmentally friendly results of treating the water. Therefore, it can be recirculated, it can be reused, and it can be safely discharged in the ecosystem without disturbing the environment. So now let's let's come back and bring it back to Ukraine. Obviously, the implications of that are enormous. I mean, we are talking about, I believe, something that can truly change the world in, in sort of the sustainability program, the water related. If there is an opportunity now not to so to say, dispose of water, especially harming the environment, that will change the game for a lot of companies, large and small. 
But I want to bring you to Ukraine. So Ukraine is always now experiencing tremendous issues with war, as we see in the eastern part of Ukraine, including your hometown, right? We have a lot of issues uh, with just delivery of water that people can use for day-to-day -day stuff. So how important it is to properly design the system, which now will be after the war ground up? It is, uh, it is crucial. Um, because, uh, like you mentioned, all the events that is happening and uh, unfortunately drinking water is uh, of uh, scarcity and a big scarcity. There is uh, many different technologies that allows for water to be treated. Uh, however, we should always try to think a step forward, a step ahead. And what I mean by that is that it's very difficult and it's not cost efficient to try to solve the challenges that we will face now and in the future with the technologies that are from the past. It's simply not good enough and it's not uh, economically feasible either. Therefore, um, if you have a mobile system which is aimed to drink, to treat a certain amount of water, it is possible to make it with a future-proof technology that could be then uh, re rebuilt or placed in the larger system, which would be a much permanent solution. So what we are focusing on is on this emergency units, which could be placed on the locations like, for example, Nikapal, uh, to be able to treat that water. That in the future could be retrofitted in the in the um, bigger plant. Well, but, well, well, I'd like to discuss, let's, uh, like, again, as you know, we, you and I, we've talked about it, that uh, Ukraine has a very unique opportunity where we can build everything ground up, meaning that you can design the infrastructure, water infrastructure for Bucha, Irpin, Gastomen. This is where we're going to focus our uh, first project. So how would you approach this from the technology standpoint where you have? Meaning that immediately from the design phase, we integrate the opportunity to recycle the water and obviously clean for all types of users, commercial included, because in order to attract commercial companies that require a lot of water, we want to make sure First of all, it's sustainable because otherwise international companies don't, don't come. Second of all, there's plenty of full water. And third of all, it prob might cost much less because it's the same water. So exactly. please talk about that part. Uh, what is really important in the stage of uh, right now, which is designing and thinking, it's to be able to understand the scope of uh, what will be what that water will be used for. If we have industries, if we have food industries, if we have heavy pollutant industries like farms or any agricultural activities, if we have a high technology plants like building solar panels or batteries, all of that involves a lot of, they are really water saving. Therefore, uh, on that stage, you design a system which would be uh, applicable to treat that amount of water plus in the future. Therefore, the crucial part is to be able to realize the scope, to understand uh, the, the needs of those projects, who, which players will be involved, how they will pollute that water, because that is uh, important. And that will be a number of technologies that will have to work together. It will be a number of steps that would have to be involved. And it's really easy to design it uh, for the future in my ground, mind. Ground up, right? Because you don't exactly. have a legacy problem. Uh, exactly. Right. So let me uh, let me understand this correctly. So for any type of our pollutant, right? The company that comes in and does some pollution, which pretty much every one company does, uh, you can have a customizable solution that allows the company to be pretty much clean, correct? Yes, correct. Um, there is a... Um, a very specific needs. For example, if we are talking about the water that needs to be reused within the factory, the idea is to be able to use the technology that will, by treating that water, not contaminate it with the chemicals, because it will be a certain point where you will have to discharge it. That would be one point. If we are using uh, multiply interconnected plants or everything is discharged in one body, which is river or somewhere else, uh, it needs to be treated not only to the points of thresholds which the government or ecosystem is telling us, but thinking ahead. For example, 20 years ago, no one was talking about micro uh, pharmaceutical residues in the drinking water. Therefore, uh, systems so we have and to drinking plants. Technologies that are coming. Exactly. Uh, Therefore, yeah, the issue nowadays is that the plants and the technology that is installed in the water treatment plants they are not suitable to, to 
tackle that problem. <laughs> so it's uh, the way we are working with is uh, really just to realize the scope, think about the future and try to understand what will be the future needs or how the thresholds will change or which contaminant will have to deal with in the future. Uh, this is, uh, Camilla, this is fascinating because obviously what you're trying to do simultaneously is to predict the future, yet design the solutions for sustainability in that predictable future. So let's come back again to the more specific, now I was bringing you down to Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> right? So for the Ukrainian companies um, in agro sector, you know, any type of sector, Ukraine has enormous pollution issues, you know, from electricity generation to water treatment and pretty much everything across. So how would you approach tackling this type of issues in Ukraine? Because obviously there is no money, uh, there is very little, uh, you know, support or at least, you know, heartfelt support. Is there financial benefits for the company to do that? Absolutely. Uh, I think Ukraine is right now, although it sounds, um, if we take away the context, what is happening right now is in a very unique position uh, with a lot of doors to be open and a very bright future, although I really hope so. Uh, Ukraine is in the position to be able to choose and to build and to design things that would last. And we have to go away from the mentality, and that is the biggest change, and that is the biggest work that needs to be done to be able to explain that change is not bad. Change normally brings some benefits, including financial benefits. Because since now we are, or Ukraine, and I belong there, we are facing uh, to enter European Union. We are facing to start uh, working with uh, European partners. We have to play by the European rules, which means that even when we are about to export our fresh produce or frozen produce, which Ukraine is very famous for food and agriculture, it has to be um, according to the certain thresholds and the certain uh, norms, which are much higher than the one we have locally. Therefore, if we are able to produce First of all, there's two points. First of all, if we are able to produce in a sustainable way when it comes to the plant level, to reuse our water, to use less chemicals, to use less uh, power, electricity, and all the resources, that is a very big plus for when it comes to the sustainability passport of the company or sustainability index, how much of those goals we're actually tackling. That is one point, uh, which allows many more grants to come into the company and many more help, much more help from the from the partners in Europe. The second thing, which is really low, but has a huge impact on the margins and the profit, is that if you are able to export your produce to your European partners, we're talking about different prices. Therefore, it allows you to enter different markets, deal with the different players and get much higher price for your raw material, which you would get. Had to sell anyway. Exactly what I do on my business side, right? I develop business for companies out of Ukraine for international markets. So it's critical to be able to use this very strong selling point today of getting stuff. Now, in addition to this, I want to add to this as you know, part of what we part of our work is on bioeconomy. We believe we can earn great deal of carbon credits through using your systems. And I think, I'm not sure if you are you using this in your financial models, but it's a huge benefit if you be able to demonstrate sustainably that you're protecting the ozone. Absolutely, absolutely. It's uh, it's getting those points, it's getting those credits, and it's getting to have um, a reputation of the companies that are modern, that are thinking ahead, and that can actually not only achieve those sustainability goals that everyone is talking about, but not so many are actually following. Now it's the point where it's not voluntarily that you need to follow the goals. And I mean by that, reduce the carbon footprint, reduce the water impact and the water footprint, energy, etc. Uh, it is mandatory in many countries. And uh, if Ukraine is able to utilize this opportunity to build the factories of the future, which we call it, it sounds a little bit uh, big but it is like that it doesn't require that much the technology is available the expertise is available the funds and money is available uh, the only thing is how to apply it and uh, ukraine is a tabula rasa right now to well, well, ukraine has a great opportunity because a lot of 
you're going to see all new companies coming in into the country uh, across all industries. Uh, but beyond what you, what you just mentioned as well, I believe this uh, allows us now to, as you said earlier in the interview, extend the shelf life to the produce. So in yes. produce, even one day of extra shelf life is enormous benefit. In the last question on the, on the matter is, if just take an average product, whatever product you like, and give me an example of how much extended the shelf life the product gets. I know packaging is involved, but just apples to apples. Yes, packaging is involved, but uh, when we're talking about food, there is always people, raw material and water. Because in any way, you will have water involved in the process. Uh, when we are taking care of that water, treating it correctly, we are making sure, because what is shelf life? Shelf life is to make sure that your product is processed, packed and distributed in a correct way to preserve it uh, in a consumable state for the consumers to buy. And what we are doing is, let's take for example, carrots or any root fruits, uh, root vegetables. Uh, with our way of applying and working, we have managed to extend the shelf life by two weeks. And we're talking fresh produce. Two weeks. Two weeks. Wow. And that, that sounds two weeks. What it means is that you don't need to rush in packing. You don't need to, to store it somewhere. You can actually pack it properly. You can reach further markets. So logistically, it's much easy. And of course, it can lay longer in the in the shelf in the but supermarket. It allows us to reduce packaging uh, because you can basically ship it fresh, like in a little, uh, you know, sudden, uh, kind of knapsack type of thing. Exactly, exactly. That is one thing. When it comes to fruits and vegetables, it's uh, uh, it's uh, even better results because they are, uh, since they are consumed normally raw, even though they have been frozen or processed in any other way, uh, they have to follow very strict um, rules when it comes to microbiology thresholds. And uh, first of all, you can export it further. I mean, we are talking completely different markets, completely different prices. And second, it's longer. So you are extending your season much further and we are talking fresh we are not talking frozen right, but also if you look at that that way you if you also potentially use the water in growing the plant itself right wouldn't that be some kind of multiplier effect if we are <laughs> yeah because when we're talking about food waste or extended shelf life we are normally focusing on the processing packaging and the supermarkets but there is many more steps that comes before and if we are working smartly with the whole chain starting from the growing like you said seeds plants how to irrigate it how to which pesticides not to use or if we use it that we can remove it further in the process uh, it becomes a coherent approach which actually makes it and multiplies the effect Excellent. but that is uh, that is the well, yeah, that it. is the point yeah but this is fascinating and this is why what i do because uh, every time I have an interview and I get to understand and learn about the person's business, it's absolutely fascinating to learn about what you've done and how how big of an impact it will be. And speaking of, so congratulations on that, but speaking of the impact, as you know, part of what we are working on is to be able to help United uh, sort of Small Businesses of Ukraine, which is in your case, we want to be able to see a major adoption by those businesses in some kind of uh, business, you know, small business product that allows them to uh, clean their own water somehow. I'm sure you're already working or thinking about that as well. But uh, as you know, United Students of Ukraine program helps small businesses now by giving them working capital. What do you think of this program and why is it so important now? I think it's critical now because now now it's the time. We, we, we cannot really wait much longer. And we have so much potential as a country not talking about the natural resources, but talking as the entrepreneurship spirit of our people and resilience of our people. We are having a fantastic product that can reach uh, the consumers outside Ukraine. And we should emphasize on that and build thinking ahead. We should really go away from the mentality of let's do as our grandparents did, but trying to adopt and really embrace all these opportunities that are available right now, be it technology, be it knowledge, expertise, consultants, or all those people that are volunteering to, to help. Well, Camila, thank you so much. I mean, you are, I'm grateful that you're gonna be hopefully part of our team and something we can offer in Ukraine. Me too. I, I, I thank you for all your work, it's fascinating. And thank you for this interview. Uh, great to see you and thank you again. Thank you very much and glory to you, Craig. Okay, thank you. Uh, everybody Thanks. support us, please share the story and we'll see you next time.